but when you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> everything <laughs> is, you're the boss, right? You're the one who has to make decisions and has to own the decisions. And you have to believe in yourself that all these decisions that you're making are the best of your knowledge and you have to do your research, you have to like get advice from advisors and have great mentors and all that. But that at the end of the day, you're the one who, are, who is going to make these decisions because it's your own baby. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are in this world, for showing up, for being dedicated, for caring, for sharing. And we really appreciate how much you're letting us know what's going on in your world so that we can help you and bring the guests every week that can share advice. And of course, that's what we're doing today with another really interesting entrepreneur, and a topic um, that I'm sure will help. So the topic today is being the boss, right? Whether you're the boss who, is, who owns the business, manages the business, grows the business, you are wearing many different hats. And the entrepreneur that I have on the show today is definitely a boss. She is um, an entrepreneur, an educator, and her name is Nassim Abdi. And Nassim is also the co-founder of a company called Storybolt. And Storybolt is a platform with over 4,100 on-demand streaming videos in over 112 countries. And these videos tackle really tough subjects. It could be uh, mental health, gender equality, wartime trauma. That's just to name a few. So I could go on and on about Nassim and what she's doing and how she's being a boss and building her business, but it's time she shares her journey and her advice with you. Nassim, it's great to have you on my show. Welcome. Thank you, Deidre. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, we're excited to hear about your journey and to learn from you. So let's kick it off with that first question, uh, becoming an entrepreneur and, and why Story Vault? Great question. Great first question. Um, well, it, it happened, I should say. <laughs> I, yes, things happen. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I never knew that entrepreneurship was going to be my path. I was a teacher, I was a faculty member in university, and I would say I failed in my teaching, <laughs> and that pushed me to think about a creative way, and um, that creative way became this baby that we have right now, Storybolt, which is using um, documentary films to um, introduce difficult topics to audience and engage them in a conversation about them through storytelling. That's really interesting. So when you were an educator um, at a university, were you teaching about different topics? Is that what led you to sort of want to tackle them in a different way? Yeah, exactly. So I've been always passionate about topics related to diversity, food inclusion, and I was teaching in, I was a faculty member in women's studies and intersection of women's studies and education. So social justice and education and uh, women's um, rights were always the topics that I loved to um, have my sessions around and the, the classes that I was teaching were all around these topics. And yeah, that was um, something that I was very passionate about. And um, I got a session that was Pretty, um, pretty much the dream session that I had because it was something that I wanted to really engage my students. And I started giving them a talk about my personal stories and it didn't work. I thought if I share my personal story, they're gonna get engaged and they want to have um, like conversation about it and they're gonna check some theories and then they wanna jump into like action projects. That was my dream. Yeah. Um, and it was my personal experience. So I, it was very valuable. It was, it was so 
you know, close to my heart. I, I wanted to really engage them with that. And I started sharing and they were not engaged. They couldn't relate to my story. They were checking their text messages. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly one way to tell. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. Uh, I probably couldn't relate to the story that I was telling them. And it was a tough day. It pushed me to think about when was the last time that I could really get engaged in a conversation with other people in the room who are not necessarily my close friends and we don't, have, we don't share experiences. So that led me to this idea of, well, actually I happen to have a perfect experience with that, so I'll tell that. I had, um, I, I happened to be the leading actress of a film oh. that was featured on Netflix. So because of that, I got first-hand experience with Q&As with films and movies. And I remember that I had the best engaging conversations in the rooms that I had these Q&As. It was such a sincere conversation, very, very meaningful, very deep. And I made my best friends through those. So I decided to try that for my class. And that changed everything. And that changed everything. That's really interesting. When you made this switch, so you're in the classroom and you, you sort of understood what engages and you pivot over to filmmakers and documentaries, what were you learning? You, you must have learned some different skills along the way, because I know it's very different to be in a classroom versus the entrepreneur who is teaching, guiding her employees mm -hmm. and, you know, launching a business. So yeah. some skills transfer, some new skills, maybe speak to that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So one thing I would tell you, Dara, hasn't changed. That was my passion for storytelling and my uh -huh. passion for, for um, these topics that are related to diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, so that's something that m helps me wake up every morning <laughs> and go oh. to my desk and start my day with that. So that definitely hasn't changed. But as you said, so many things have changed. So when you're a teacher in classroom, your whole responsibility is to make sure that when you wake up and uh, do your prep for class and go to your class, you have hopefully the best experience of teaching and learning and engaging your students and you're hoping that something has changed for them and right. some new learning happened, right? That's the ultimate. And then you, of course, you do some service, you do some other things around it. But when you're an entrepreneur, <laughs> everything <laughs> is, you're the boss, right? You're the one who has to make decisions and has to own the decisions. And you have to believe in yourself that all these decisions that you're making are the best of your knowledge and you have to do your research you have to like get advice from advisors and have great mentors and all that but that at the end of the day you're the one who are, who is going to make these decisions because it's your own baby it's not something that anyone else can help with so that's definitely one thing that has changed for me a lot and you're on your own Yes. And nothing is certain, right? Everything is. <laughs> Which makes it uh, an exciting adventure. There's, there's no doubt Absolutely. about it. I mean, you know, having the responsibility that you just mentioned, everything kind of falls on your shoulders. It, it can be a weight, but at the same time, you mentioned that passion. That's what transferred over. And somehow that passion and weight balance out so that you can propel forward. And I'm just wondering if there is any um, aha moment <laughs> or, or maybe uh-oh at when you were first starting out or when you launched your business, that, that really was some kind of a defining moment. Right, right, yeah, absolutely. So as I shared with you, this was something that I was so passionate to start. Um, I, I'm gonna tell you, okay, that day that I went to my class, um, the topic that I wanted to teach about was about impact of war on people. Mm -hmm. And I was sharing my personal stories of growing up during the brutal war, losing my fiance due to chemical attacks and all that. So that was like huge. Like th that was the biggest story of my life that I was sharing and I didn't sure. get that engagement. So 
it was really tough to see that they're not responding to that experience. I, my dream was that they're going to get engaged and we're going to have a really meaningful conversation. So when I had the right film and they got engaged, I was like, and then the filmmaker joined and we had the q and I was like, why we don't have this platform? So that was the moment that I started thinking, I mean, whatever happens in this world, I'm going to create this platform. I'm so passionate about this that I'm going to start. What I didn't know about it is <laughs> I'm enjoying the ignorance of not knowing how difficult this path is, <laughs> which helped me because it, I didn't even doubt that I'm going to quit my teaching position <laughs> and I'm going to start this. And that's going to be one thing that I'm going to create in this world and leave after I leave. And um, it was a good thing that I didn't know how difficult it was going to be. And um, <laughs> because probably, if you know, you're not going to start. Yes, um, that's right. If you, okay. if you know too much, <laughs> then yes. you, you might you, say, you oh, make, whoa, yeah, then you look at all these options. Then you're probably not going to make a decision. <laughs> exactly. And another thing was, I thought, oh, it's going to be so flexible. It's going to be, I'm going to own my time. Mm -mm. It was opposite. <laughs> really interesting. It's, it's your baby, you know, like whenever it needs you, you have to be there, right? It's That's just, right. It's like, it's like a baby. Oh, you just made some great points, Nassim. I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts just for a moment because we're going to shift over to the sponsor of today's episode, who is NRPR, and Nicole Rodriguez, who is the CEO, has written a book called Beverly Hills Boss. <laughs> so you're a boss, she's a boss. Uh, before I get to a little bit about what's in Nicole's book and where everybody can get a copy, I thought I'd ask you a, a question. Being an entrepreneur and a boss, maybe you can just share um, two or three steps that you had to take in the beginning that you feel really helped your business? Great question, Deirdre. Well, I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is find a mentor. Find a mentor in your field because that definitely, they've been there, they've done that, and they can help you throughout the way. Those days that you're so down and you think everything is you know, against you and nothing going to happen, nothing going to change. Maybe I should go back to my teaching position. <laughs> <laughs> those days, those mentors who've been there and done that will tell you that this is part of the path. So don't quit. Um, and also they give you some really good tricks on how to find the rest of the things that you need. The second one is build a killer team, I would say. I couldn't do what... We've, we've done without this amazing team and my co-founder and um, all these other people who are dedicated to this vision that we have. Um, they're they are all like co-founders right now because they've been there from the day one and we found them through their passion, like how much they're passionate about this that you're building. And That's great. that helps a lot. And the third thing I would say is when you do all that, then you are a boss and you have to make decisions because you're not only leading your own path, but you're also responsible for other people in your team. And that means you have to make a lot of difficult decisions. You have to make a lot of wise decisions. And that doesn't mean that you have to have all the wisdom in the world because no one has, right? No one does. But you will do your your you know, consulting, you ask friends, mentors, advisors, and all that, you'll do your research. And then at the end of the day, you are the decision maker. You have to make decisions and own them. So don't feel that you're not capable of that. That, mm -hmm. that empowering feeling that I'm the one that I'm leading this sheep is really important. Oh, so that I, is definitely empowering. Yeah, I and I, I, would, I would be honest, I didn't have it, all, obviously I didn't have it from the first day. I learned it throughout the way, sometimes in a hard way, <laughs> but, but um, that's the joy of entrepreneurship. That's the, the, you know, exciting path that you go through. The joy of being a boss. Thank you so much for sharing those steps. It's really important. And, you know, 
Nicole shares a lot of insights in her book. She's very generous about what she learned and, and how she grew. And three things that I want to point out in the book, um, I thought it was really helpful that she shares how you shouldn't dabble in your finances. <laughs> One of the steps that she took right away was to find a good accountant, right? Don't be Please. your own CPA if you don't have that expertise. Um, the second thing is to get a really good banking partner, right? D don't just settle for any old banker. It's, it's do your due diligence. It's a relationship and, and who's going to serve you and your business in the best possible way. And the, her, the last point that, you know, kind of comes to my mind, which is also something that you said about building your team, it's that knowing when to be able to hire. And that's a very important decision because I know a lot of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. <laughs> including myself, who sometimes you think, oh, I could just do that. But you're, you're taking yourself away from some of the important things that you need to do as the boss or the CEO of the company. Absolutely. I can agree more with what Nicole has in her book and what you just mentioned, the highlights and yeah, um, <laughs> finance, the, the, having the, the expert on that, a good banker and also building uh, your team when you need it. Don't think that you can do everything on your own. It's impossible. And you're going to put your life on, you know, on risk and everyone else around you going to be really, uh, uh, you know, miserable if you do that. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Nassim, for sharing your thoughts. And I also want to thank NRPR and Nicole Rodriguez for sponsoring this episode. Now, for all of you out there who want to get your copy of Beverly Hills Boss, super simple, you can go to beverlyhillsboss.com forward slash book. Go check it out. And don't worry if you didn't catch the website address, it will be in the show notes and it's also going to be in the YouTube description. Okay, Nassim. Let's Just jump back. It down. Yeah, <laughs> great. Let's jump back into our discussion. Um, maybe you can share with us. So you you talked about the the aha moment and when you sort of learned how bringing in somebody else and the the sharing of the story, the documentary, getting the engagement, and then shifting over to the platform. How with all of this going on? And with everything that you're learning as the boss, how do you stay focused? Hmm. Great question. <laughs> and very important. Um, you're asking good questions. <laughs> and it's this one actually is one of the most important things, especially for startups. Um, like you have always this tendency of, um, maybe I can add this part. Maybe I can add that product. Maybe I can do this and that. that. Maybe I can serve schools and companies and you know all these different ideas that comes to mind um and the very important uh, thing that you should always remember is staying focused starting small and then adding is really something that um, makes the difference at the end of the day because um we can't do everything at the same time right so we have to prioritize and we have to start with something small so that's from the, the company perspective uh, we are always trying to stay laser focused on one product that we are making. And our motto is, if we can make this well, then it can uh, expand to many other things. And it could walk for, for itself and bring so many other things. On a personal level, for myself, <laughs> staying focused, um, I use a lot of gadgets, actually. I use, <laughs> I use um, to-do lists. Um, platforms that help me really find out what is the most important thing that I should do today. I write journals um, and I follow 2080 rule, which with 20 things that you do each day, um, you'll produce 80%. So I'll try to find what are, what is the 20% of each day that I have um, and that will sort of lead me to what is the most important thing. Um, and another thing that I do love is uh, Pomodoro technique, which helps me a lot. What is that? 
time blocks. That pomodoro is, um, I think it's Italian word for tomato, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Um, don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I think that's <laughs> what it is. And my app has a little to tomato. Look that up. <laughs> yeah, and that's technically it's very simple. It's like whatever task that I have, I will give it 25 minutes, mm -hmm. and 25 minutes is more than enough to maybe not to finish something but definitely to start it and get engaged with it and usually with those tasks that you're like i'm really not a fan of doing um, like numbers and finance and that side and you always need to review something even if you have the experts yeah yeah you, yeah, you need to do it. so that gives me that focus that this 20 minutes this 25 minutes sorry is the 25 minutes that I'll pause my email and everything else and I'll go to that and um, either I get it done or I'll have a such a good start that I don't want to leave it in the middle and then five minutes break yeah so I want to ask you a quick question about networking because mm -hmm. you mentioned an app uh, when we were chatting earlier. Mm -hmm. So I know networking is super important as an entrepreneur yeah. and as you're growing your business. Could you share that app with everybody that you said that you love so much? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Launch Club. <laughs> it was something that I just found. I think maybe somebody invited me to it. Um, I would say that my main networking platform is still LinkedIn. I okay. love LinkedIn. I connect with so many people. But what is special about Lunch Club is you get, you share your interest and your area of work, like whatever, like for example, we are doing business development and it's diversity, equity, inclusion. That these are the topics that I put there. And they have an AI system that they do match you with someone who has business development experience or expertise and has been in DEI field. So they do this match. They introduce you with a very simple email. Here is this person, here is you, the LinkedIn pages. And then they arrange a video call for you. Oh. So it's like those, um, what is it called? The, 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 date, the past um, dating experience yeah, that you have. It's kind of like a dating app. So dating app, yeah. And you so you match. Each other. Yeah. Yeah, you have 30 minutes, you chat about the experiences. And I can't tell you how many great relationships I built through this app. And I got to know someone in Austin, Texas, who introduced me to the perfect consulting firm that would be our channel partner, oh, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, okay, amazing. so everybody, women worldwide, all of you viewers and, and listeners, Lunch Club app, mm -hmm. check it out. And the beauty of the, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Deirdre. The beauty of this app is no matter which country you are, which part of the world you are, you Ooh. can get connected to people from all around the world if you decide. So global connections, that's even better. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. And Nassim, I can't even believe we're at the part of the interview where you get to share your overall advice. Um, so I'm going to ask you to let all, everybody out there, women worldwide, the network, know how is it what can they do to keep their passion to be that boss and to really create that impact what would you say to them i would say if you every day you wake up and think nothing is impossible and that's the ring that i have in my right hand that says nothing is impossible Ooh. and believe it or not i have it for five years now from the day that I had the idea about Storybolt and I was thinking would it be possible to do that and then my very good friend um, she um, she heard that and she gave me this ring that and she so said nice of her. It, it's something that I can't believe that it's it's just like my That's wedding awesome. ring that I have on my left, left hand every morning I look at it and I think nothing is impossible if you are passionate enough about it and you're persistent right like you keep pushing regardless of all those naysayers out there regardless of everything else out there if you believe in something you will make it happen that, that's the only i think that's the only recipe for successful businesses and i listen to so many stories on different you know podcasts and everywhere and the single thing that i i agree 
with all these stories and I hear from all these stories is that if you continue and push for something that you believe in, it will happen. That's right. You have to believe. Excellent advice, Nassim. Last question. Super easy. Where can people find out more about you and Story Vault? Yeah, sure. That's an easy question. <laughs> Storyvault.com uh, is the platform that they can learn more about Story Vault and what we do. And I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. <laughs> so if you go to linkedin.com slash Nassim Abdi, very easy. Okay. Um, you can find me there. And uh, I answer to all the questions or the, the, the comments or messages myself. So <laughs> I'm uh, very active there. Yeah. Terrific. And, and lunch club. <laughs> and lunch club. Well, lunch club is random. So you, you might get so many out. amazing meetings. <laughs> and I hope that I can meet them <laughs> through lunch club as well. Awesome. Well, <laughs> path see. across. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing your passion, your journey, your advice, and, and really just the work that you're doing is wonderful with all this streaming video on demand and really highlighting some important and pressing issues in society. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to you, Sarah, for having me. It was a pleasure speaking with you today. Oh, you're welcome. And I just want to give another big thank you to NRPR and Nicole Rodriguez and her book. So Beverly Hills Boss. And also just a big thank you to all of you for being here, for tuning in. And please keep the sharing going of the conversations. We so appreciate it. And the feedback, we love that too. You know where to find me on Twitter. You know how to email me, Deirdre at pureperformancecom.com. And until our next episode, of course, be safe, stay focused, energized, and feel empowered. Thank you.